I got an amazing question over on Patreon asking about the difference between borderline personality disorder and complex post-traumatic stress disorder, and that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about in this video. What is up everybody, this is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. So what I like to do, I like to teach people how to improve their mental health, but I also like to increase awareness and decrease the stigma around this lovely topic of our mental health. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So this is my first ever Patreon Q&A. So I've talked about it a little bit in some past videos. So I, I do have a Patreon and a lot of you ask me to make videos. A ton of you ask me to make videos and sometimes I make them, sometimes I don't. But what I wanna do as a reward for the people who are helping to support the channel, I wanna kinda prioritize you know, the videos that they would like me to make. And in this video, I'm gonna focus on this specific topic, but all of my patrons just know, I'm going to try to answer all of your questions. It's just this really deserves a dedicated video, but I'm gonna try to bundle some of the other questions together. So don't you worry, I will be getting all of them squeezed in. All right, so this uh, question came from one of my like longest subscribers, Luana, okay? She's been around here, like she is OG, the rewired soul, like back when I was still like recording videos on my cell phone, all right? And she asked me, you know, because someone in her life is struggling with uh, BPD and or CPTSD, and she's like, what's the difference? So I'm like, huh, that's a great question. And it's a great question, I think it needs a dedicated video, because I know a lot of you, a lot of you have come to my channel for my borderline personality disorder videos, okay? And it's important that we talk about this. So I'm gonna be completely transparent with all of you, completely, because I've seen some like people like trying to like expose people for like plagiarism and stuff. Right before making this video, I watched Katie Morton's video on BPD versus CPTSD. And a lot of the information from her video is going to be in this video. I will link to her video down in the description below. But I mentioned throughout my Shane Dawson video, like Katie is a very, very good therapist and very well educated. And I often go to her channel to educate myself on certain mental health topics. So yeah, you're gonna see some similarities. But one thing, I can make a whole nother video on this. like. One thing I will say is that sometimes we teach things different and explain things different. So like, it's good for a bunch of different people to teach or explain a different topic because sometimes it's more well, well received from other people. Like sometimes, you know, when somebody tells me something, it makes no sense and then somebody else tells me the exact same thing, it makes perfect sense. So like, don't knock on people for like, you know, using other people's information. The thing that we should be talking about is like, do we give credit, which I'm doing for Katie Morton. All right, so first, a topic I have not covered on this channel yet is CPTSD. This is complex post-traumatic stress disorder, all right? So I've talked about PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, but CPTSD is a little bit different. The way they differentiate these two is somebody who experienced as a CPTSD and has that diagnosis is somebody who had a repeated trauma. So typically this is, this is somebody who repeated like continuous, like for example, child abuse, right? Or like when they were a kid or they were in a rela an abusive relationship and these are traumas that happen over and over and over and over again. Like I would say, you know, people who have been, you know, uh, a victim of like human trafficking, these are people who might have CPTSD or somebody who has like a relative or a family member or, you know, whoever it might be who traumatized them over and over and over again, okay? So this is, this is like a reoccurring trauma, all right? With PTSD, it could be like one specific event. So some of the issues that somebody with uh, CPTSD might struggle with include uh, problems with emotion uh, regulation, which we're gonna talk about again in a second when it comes to borderline personality disorder, um, not remembering the trauma. So there, like when we talk about repressed memories and things like that, there are a lot of people with CPTSD where they, they, they don't remember, okay? Now, one of the other issues that they have is their perception of themselves, okay? The perception that, you know, they're not good, they're a bad person, and different kind of like negative self-talk. One of the other issues is, is a distorted perception of the abuser, okay? And this is very important to discuss because you have people who will defend the abuser, especially if it was like a parent, right? There are some people who will take care of this person in their old age, even though the person 
person uh, who, who is struggling with the CPTSD is the victim in the situation. And that's very important. This is why you need to get help for this kind of thing. And one of the last issues that they, they struggle with is a lot of uh, trust issues with other people. Like somebody with uh, PTSD might not necessarily have trust issues depending on their trauma. So now, as far as borderline personality disorder, I have an entire BPD playlist, and this video is going in that, but I highly recommend you go check out my BPD playlist. I have videos about um, the nine uh, symptoms. You have to meet five of them to be diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. I have a video uh, talking about the emotional dysregulation issues. I have a video about what causes borderline personality disorder. So I've already done this video like a bunch of times in different ways, so make sure you go check that out. But some of the main things that people with BPD struggle with is um, emotional regulation, right? Extreme highs and extreme lows, but it's different than bipolar disorder. I talked about it a little bit in my video about Trisha Paytas, when her and Jason Nash sat down with uh, Katie Morton, actually. Um, they have, uh, they also have issues with impulse impulsivity, because when these emotions are going up, they might do, um, Risky behaviors, right? This can be substance abuse, promiscuity, uh, just other dangerous things. The other one is is uh, this like intense fear of abandonment, and many times it's more imagined than it is real. And then, and then feelings of emptiness. Like one of the reasons it's called borderline personality disorder is that people with BPD. Um, have a hard time finding a sense of self, okay? So that's a little crash course in BPD. So as you can see, there are some similarities between CPTSD and BPD, all right? And this is why it's important to never diagnose yourself. Never diagnose yourself, okay? I make these videos for educational purposes. Like the main reason I make these videos is because if, if you can relate to some of these symptoms, if you're like, huh, that kind of sounds like me. Go talk to a professional. Go talk to a professional. Do not WebMD this stuff. Do not even go and buy one of these DSMs or anything like. Talk to a professional. Because mental illness is very, very difficult because so many disorders have overlapping uh, symptoms. And that's one of the reasons Luana asked me this question because BPD and CPTSD have a lot of overlapping symptoms, all right? So let's talk about some of the main differences. So as far as the overlapping goes, check this out. This is a stat that I pulled from Katie Moore's video, okay? So 24% of people with PTSD also have borderline personality disorder, okay? 30% of people with BPD also have PTSD, all right? So something I talk about all the time, and this is why like, I try to make these videos and try to teach people how to improve their mental health. Most people, not all, but most uh, people with BPD suffered some kind of trauma when they were younger, okay? Now, whether or not they get diagnosed with PTSD is different, but I had a comment the other day like, BPD can be genetic too. I know, I talked about that in my video about what causes BPD. But it's important for us to realize that. like. As, as adults, as parents, as humans, we can cause mental illness in other people. That's why I try to decrease the stigma. Like, it's, it's terrible that people like blame somebody for their mental illness when there are many times where a traumatic event that was ex outside of somebody's control helped cause that mental illness, all right? Now, one of the main differences between BPD and CPTSD is somebody with CPTSD had to have had a traumatic event, okay? Someone with BPD is not always a traumatic event, could be other things. And trauma is very subjective, it's different for everybody. It, uh, it's two different people, one person might have been traumatized with one situation and the other person, same situation, not traumatized, all right? So I think that's like very important to understand about people who understand what PTSD, like I saw some nasty comments on the recent video I did about PTSD and abuse, and people were like, toughen up, toughen up. Like, I, I hate that. I hate how people think that their reality is everybody else's reality. Drives me nuts. Anyways, anyways, the way that treatment and recovery is for CPTSD and BPD is also different. So somebody with CPTSD, their, their primary focus and goal of treatment is to process through the trauma, right? To heal the brain, to work through that pain, to help the brain heal and not uh, be so reactive to triggers, okay? One of the best therapies out there, and I've had some people ask me to make a video about this, but I haven't yet, but go Google this. One of the best therapies out there is EMDR therapy for people with any type of PTSD, whether it's PTSD or CPTSD. It is like eye movement reprocessing 
Wait, no, desensitization and reprocess. Zach, fix this and look up the definition for me. <laughs> I always forget what it is. But anyways, very, very, very effective for EMDR. I, I know uh, dozens of people who have PTSD or CPTSD and they've done EMDR therapy and they've said it's been life-changing for them. And do me a favor too, if you've ever done EMDR therapy, for my future video, let me know down in the comments below, like, did it help, did it not help? Let me know down in the comments below. Okay, so now BPD. BPD, since it's not always necessarily about a trauma, BPD is more about learning how to regulate emotions. So, for people with BPD, one of the best therapies for that is dialectical behavioral therapy, okay, DBT, all right? I have a subscriber here who is always up in the comments and he's talking a lot and me and him have been talking about grounding techniques. So DBT uses a lot of grounding techniques slash mindfulness to help you become more aware. I talked about this in my video that uh, Trisha Paytas and Jason Nash did with Katie Morton, like, a lot of this like stopping your behaviors and uh, controlling your impulses comes from grounding techniques, mindfulness meditation, DPD, all of that kind of goes together, okay? So one of the last and final differences between these two is that people with BPD are more likely to have self-harming behavior and suicidal thoughts, okay? Um, a lot of them struggle with, uh, you know, themselves, that interpersonal stuff. So while somebody with CPTSD may have like a poor internal dialogue, it gets much more extreme for people with BPD, okay? So anyways, let's talk down in the comments below. Did you learn something? Did this help you out in any way, shape, or form, all right? But again, I'm going to do uh, more Patreon Q and A's. So if you're one of those people who is always telling me in the comments, do a video about this, do a video about that, come over to Patreon. You can sign up for as little as a dollar a month. It helps support me and do what I love to do, which is help people with their mental health. And you get more personalized content because I love answering questions and rewarding the people who are helping to support the channel. But if you can't, if you can't do that, like, don't worry. I love the fact that you're just here anyways, all right? But that's all I got for you with this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell. And these are all the beautiful members of Patreon. It keeps growing. I love you all so much. And if you would like to help support the channel and have your questions answered, you can click or tap on that Patreon icon right there, all right? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.